All right, guys. Hey, welcome back uh, to the channel. So, uh, kind of just skipped ahead yesterday and started tearing the motor down. Um, I've realized that vlogging all of this is taking up quite a bit of time as well, and I only have so much time. So, yesterday I didn't film the teardown of, of any of this stuff, removing the timing chain, the oil pan, or the oil pump. Um, or even the water pump housing. So I'm at the point now where I can start putting things back on. I'm gonna start by um, filling the oil plug here. I have a 10 millimeter bolt. I'm gonna put some Honda Bond on that uh, and get that sealed up. And then we can continue forward with putting on the uh, four piston ported oil pump here. We also have to put the drag cartel gear on as well as swap out the, uh, the original VTC to the 50 degree VTC and then we can continue to put back the, the timing chain and the tensioner and get this thing buttoned up. I am waiting on oil pan bolts and hardware which won't be in until Monday so uh, I can get the timing chain all that stuff and the cover on in this go and then we'll just be waiting to put the pan on last anyway. So let's get some Honda Bond on this bolt right here and then we will thread it in. So there you can see the bolt installed. It is a 12 millimeter, and this needs to be torqued to 16 foot-pounds. Good. All right, so that's done. And then let's put the, the new drag cartel gear on before we put the oil pump in and keep making progress forward. All right, so here's the drag cartel timing gear kit uh, comes with the new gear, a new key, and an OEM um, sprocket. That's the to, the to keep the our read pickup timing. So we'll pull this one off and put the new one on. So I do have it at TDC there for the most part. We'll time that when we put the chain on. So this one just comes out and we'll slide the new one on. All right, so the windage tray is on. I reused the six bolts that held the, the K24 two-piece windage tray in there. These are tightened to 8.7 foot-pounds or roughly 110 inch-pounds. I did inch-pounds because my torque wrench does not go below 10 uh, foot-pounds. So that's on there. Now we're going to put the oil pump on. This is the four-piston ported one. Uh, it comes with the chain the bolts uh, to mount it and the the new the guide there's the part number of the chain so we're going to get this on there and torque that down as well the pumps in these are torqued down to spec these are 16 foot pounds and this is 8.7 the chain is on we'll install the um the guide that goes here that they supply and we reuse the old nuts uh that came off of the original one here so we'll get that installed as well all right so the new guide is on these two are 8.7 foot pounds now it's time to install uh the tensioner so i just got a new one uh, just to be safe there's the part number right there and i'll just reuse the uh, the hardware from the k24 okay so that looks fantastic um everything down here is is complete now we just pull this guy and we have tension on that oil pump chain so um, four piston ported oil pump is complete now we can flip the motor over and we're gonna rip off the VTC gear and install the 50 degree one so overall this was not bad I followed hybrid racing's uh, tutorial on YouTube and it's pretty um, comprehensive and detailed so if you are looking at how to do this I uh, suggest you follow that one so this is good to go we'll flip it over and and uh, work on that cam gear okay well ran into a bit of a hiccup hurdle whatever you want to call it while I was trying to break the cam gear bolt loose to replace it with the 50 degree VTC I did have the pins in the pulse plates and a wrench here but my wrench did slip and all of the force uh, was taken and absorbed up by this pay, uh, pulse plate 
I thought I saw something that looked weird. I thought I saw the cam twist and this knot, but I moved forward and I tried to get it in time and it was timing up front, but the pulse plates, uh, pulse plates were not lining up back here and they were off by a half of hole, a half of a hole on this um, intake side and something just didn't feel right. So I did a little digging and a little asking and the moment I cracked this bolt loose, the pulse plate was spinning freely on the gear because I sheared off the key away, which you can see right there. So ordered a new one from Honda, got it on there and was able to get the chain and everything timed up, installed the DC chain guide and the new tensioner. So this is all ready to go. I'm currently working on the uh, chain case. I spent some time cleaning it up. It looks much better than what it did and I'm not gonna spray this. I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. I'll probably replace this, but I do have new hardware for these three bolts here and, um, and a new um, seal for this as well. So I'm just working on getting the old Honda Bond off to get this surface ready to go on and then we can keep pushing forward. We went to Honda today to pick up all of the oil pan hardware that we're gonna need. So gonna keep working on this, get this ready so we can then install it. So we're gonna continue to make progress and keep pushing forward. All right, so the chain cover is on. All these bolts are torqued. New hardware looks so nice on there. Uh, you know, that's as clean as I can get, it's pretty good. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get the block that clean. Um, we'll see. But at some point, we might have to remember this is not a show car. Uh, this isn't a model toy, it's an engine. So at the end of the day, I want it to be running and I just want it to be put together well and work and uh, the aesthetics uh, can take a back seat at, at a certain point. So you can see I have all of the Honda parts, the new, um, bolts and hardware here and going through them and so far it's looking great so now i'm going to flip it over i'm going to get the oil pan on and um get those uh bolts where they need to be there's a few special ones i believe there's the three that go up here that have a guide on them um and other than that we'll just keep pushing forward i probably will reinstall the old valve cover just for now because i don't want to um, take any chance of nicking up the the good one that's in here so I'm gonna flip the engine over and I'm going to start cleaning that surface and getting the pan prepped for installation. Yesterday I started to record and my battery just died and I did not have the patience or time to wait for it to charge or even go get another one. So I uh, didn't videotape anything yesterday and just pushed forward. I'm running out of time. It's the end of July and I'm unsure if I'm gonna make my goal uh, of being over into Spokane mid-August, but we'll see. But let's go over what we we did do yesterday and what we have done since the last video. So yesterday I was able to get uh, the intake manifold on. I am waiting for new hardware from Honda to come. That should be there tomorrow. I also got the K-tuned uh, pulley on. The water pump is tightened and I just mounted the the engine mount here to see what it looked like that will come off for the install of the motor this valve cover is just sitting on here um, until we put it in the car we'll put the new the nice black one on we're just getting ready to now torque down the crank pulley bolt so that's kind of where we're at we're waiting on a few things as well for for this side i need a new uh, metal gasket for here and then we can mount this um upper water neck or um inlet that's going to go here so we're just kind of waiting on a few little parts luckily honda is a one or two day out for most of this stuff so i'm able to get it pretty quickly uh, but sometimes i don't need it until i come across it which could be a day or two wait so i'm hoping that's the end of it i'm also going to install the plm uh, thermostat housing here today as i do have the hose coming to connect from here to that area so I'm just gonna keep pushing forward on the little things that I can do. I can also start cleaning up the transmission over here, as well as getting the uh, fuel pump in the car and the relay mounted up. So I do have a bunch of stuff that I can continue to keep doing. Sometimes it's hard for my brain to step away from the task at hand and start another project. 
Um, but I think I'm going to probably have to do that in order to, to hopefully meet my deadline. So, uh, we're going to get this torque down. We'll see, um, hopefully that goes well. We have the right tools for it and a long enough breaker bar. These supposedly require a lot of torque. Um, the manual says go to 36 foot pounds and then a 90 degrees beyond that. Others are saying 181. So we're going to do our best to meet the, uh, manufacturer's spec. So this uh, doesn't have any problem coming off. We're also going to use a little bit of red Loctite on that as well, just for safety measures. So I'm going to get that set up and we'll keep going forward, but it is looking good. I think, um, overall the, the, the appearance of the motor looks great. And with a brand new valve cover and, and wrinkle black, this thing's going to really start to take shape. So I'm going to keep pushing forward and get that crank bullet pulley bolt, uh, installed. Okay. So, I went to 36 and then the max my torque wrench goes up to is uh, 150. So I torqued it to 150, which is quite a bit. And I only got to about, I would say 45 degrees when I made the mark. And then I added another push with a bigger wrench and extension and got, you know, a few more out of it. So. I'm gonna leave it there. I think that red Loctite will help. Again, this is a clockwise rotating motor unlike the B series, so uh, I think it should be okay. I followed the steps in the manual too, is putting a little oil on the back side of this nut so the the, the bolt can actually have, not cre create friction when it is spinning against the, the big washer there. And it also ca calls for oil on the threads as it's going in, uh, but because we put Loctite on there, I'm gonna, um, use the Loctite as my lubricant. So this is tight. Um, I want to go over around here now. I'm going to install the thermostat housing. I did yesterday replace the thermostat that comes with it with a, a better quality one. Supposedly the, the one that does come with it isn't very good. So I just swapped this out. Uh, requires some snap ring pliers, some heavy duty ones to be exact to get that out. Now this is ready to go. And I do have a plug on top here because I'm not running a heater. And this will go to the bottom of the intake manifold. And this port is plugged because I will not be needing a temperature sensor there. So just bolts up via an O-ring and some hardware. And then we can put this guy on there. Okay, so here's the hardware that goes on the housing. I am going to hit him with a little blue thread uh, locker. Eh, that's hard to do right-handed especially being a lefty um but uh that'll just ensure that they don't they don't back out i will use the uh 8.7 foot pounds just like all the other smaller bolts that go on uh at this engine and that's what i believe these are from the factory anyways so we'll put that there one of the pros uh of having your brother work at a pipe and thread fluid company hydraulic company is you can get these gigantic bottles of Loctite at a discount. So this will probably last me a lifetime. So anyways, those are ready to go in and we'll, we'll, we'll get the, the housing on. All right. So that's on. I, um, I left these three bolts loose because I don't know how this is going to be clocked, uh, for the coolant line. So, I'm just going to leave these three loose for now and then once we get it in the car we can mock up that and then we will tighten it down uh, where it needs to be. But this part uh, is uh, secure and tight as well as this uh, block off um, plug as well as this. So we're just waiting on the hose that runs from here to there. This has been Honda bonded and is sealed up so this is good to go. I think the next thing we can do now is we're going to come around here and put this um the vtex solenoid on i painted the cover of it so it looks nice and we have some new hardware so we'll get the engine tilted up forward and get that installed okay well we're going to be at a stopping point for this portion while we wait for things to arrive at honda over the next couple of days i totally forgot to order the filter for that um so it's going to take another day to get that so we're going to pause there on the motor and continue just working on other things that we can 
Uh, that being the transmission. I'm just gonna clean this up the best I can. I don't wanna spray it. And it just has, you know, years of dirt and grime and some grease on it. Uh, but what I'm using is this aluminum brightener and it seems to be doing the trick. So you can see up top here, it's pretty clean. So I'm just gonna go in there with a brush. I have, to, I have a, a nylon brush, just a toothbrush, and this one's a wire brush. And I'm just gonna spend some time um, cleaning it the best I can. I'm not gonna spray paint it because I just, sometimes I think that just looks too fake. Uh, I think it looks good at point at time, but also um, the appearance is, is, is too much. So I'm gonna just get this cl as clean as I can and it's doing a pretty good job. Some of these parts um, are pretty, might be just stained. So we'll, we'll see maybe a coat of spray paint on some of these little pieces here. But overall, I think the case is gonna look really good and, and the idea behind this is just to get it clean, a clean starting point for me. And that way, if we do have any leaks, I can spot them. And if we are working on it and we're under the car, we're not dealing with any grease and grime and, and getting any dirtier than we have to. So I'm just gonna finish up this video with um, cleaning this and I'll show you the final result when it's all completed.